I thought my hair was bad. How about a trim, hmm? Oh, well, don't look at me like that. I am a joker after all. Okay, in all seriousness, I know why you're here. I know why you've chosen this place over Supercuts or uh, Fantastic Sam's. It's the quality. See, the quality of those joints. It's a bad joke. On par with the integrity of a certain Mr. Dent, who we all know was not exactly loyal to his city after the loss of his little pal. Anyhow, you come to the right place. Here at the Gotham Barbershop, we get things done, and we get them done right. Now, I know you've been waiting a little while, so I'd like to offer the most <clears throat> sincere apology a clown like me can offer. You see, we've had a pretty high turnover rate around these parts as of late. Over time, the gaggle of hardened criminals turned stylists that we've hired has shrunken into a duo. Myself and an old pal from the League of Shadows. He's a bit busy at the moment, so I'm the only one cutting hair around here. Thus, the long wait. But now, it's your turn. Consider yourself lucky. I see you've chosen the basic wash and trim. A fine choice indeed. In that case, today's order of operations is as follows. A vigorous shampoo and conditioning session. The requisite cutting and styling. Um, uh, attending to the finer details with the electric clipper. And finally, a nice warm blow dry. Sound good to you? Hmm. Fantastic. Okay, let's get started. Follow me over to this sink, if you will. There you go. Great. All right. I'm going to gently put this towel over the back of your shirt, you know, to avoid any unwanted moistening of your precious shirt fabric. Okay. Now, just sit back and relax. That's right. Perfect. So, first up's the shampoo. And oh, what a shampoo it is. The revered, the famous, Aqua de Parma brand shampoo. A staple among celebrities and the wealthy. This stuff has been around since the 30s. Word has it that a certain Mr. Wayne is a big fan of it. And regardless of what you might think of little old Bruce, there's no denying his choice of product. Anyway, this stuff's going to freshen up your scalp with a plethora of fine ingredients. Lavender essence. Vervain, rosemary, Sicilian citrus, and Bulgarian rose. Now, it doesn't matter if you understood a single word of that, because the point is, you'll be looking and feeling freakishly nice. But enough of my little spiel. Let's wet that hair. Now, don't, don't hesitate to let me know if the temperature is a bit, or uh, more than a bit, less than ideal. I personally prefer a scalding scalp myself, but... I know most people prefer something a little more uh, civilized. and drenched. Now for the product. Ah, that right there is the sweet smell of success, of luxury, or more accurately, of a frankly absurd and unnecessary mixture of things. I mean, who even decided that society needed something more complicated than good old basic shampoo? Beats me, but I'm glad they did, because this stuff is like pure nectar for your follicles. You might not be able to tell, but believe me, your hair can. All right, now let's 
go ahead and lather it in. and frothy. I hope you're not too attached to it though because it's going bye bye right about now. That's what they mean when they say throwing the money down the drain. Next up, conditioner. Now, I know a few folks who think conditioner is a waste, redundant, more pointless chemical goo to spend your cold hard cash on. But I tell ya, this stuff might just be the most important part. It's one thing to have clean hair, and another to have quality hair, and all. That feeling where you can just tell it's been taken care of. When you touch it and you feel like you're stroking the mane of a glorious lion basking out in the plains of Africa. Well, I mean, I'll be that nice, but I think you get the idea. Anyway, I've chosen a brand that'll surely be quite shocking to hear. That's right, Aqua di Parma. They make the best shampoo and the best conditioner like salt and pepper on the pile of mashed potatoes that is your hair. Hmm. Maybe not the best metaphor. Oh well, here we go. Here we are, nice and conditioned. Time for a rinse. More cold hard cash down the drain for you folks.
Okay, now that your hair is perfectly clean and feels just fantastic, let's cut it off. You know, if you ask me, it seems like a bit of a waste to cut off what we just covered in that pricey shampoo and conditioner. But hey, I'm not the one paying for it. Sit right up and I'll go ahead and remove that towel from your shirt. There we go. Now to your seat, pal. Time to make the long trek across the shop. All right, sit on down. Here comes the cape. Okay, don't get too excited there, Batman. This ain't a crime-fighting cape. It's a hair-deflecting one. Big, big difference. You ain't gonna be taking out Gotham's finest scumbags in that thing. Now for the fun part. The part where we play with sharp objects. Don't you worry, though. I won't be carving any flesh with these. That's typically part of my other job. Anyway, let's get going. prefer good old-fashioned barber shops over chain joints like supercuts. Supercuts is too quick. I don't savor all the little details. All they care about is the technical act of shortening one's hair. You see, when a barber takes his time, when he treats his customers as the works of art they are, he truly puts a part of himself into their hair. So, when you think about it, there's really no better way to get to know a barber than to have him chop yours off. But I digress. Your head is already looking at least three times better than it did before. We've only just begun. you've been eyeing my barber's license over there. What? You think it's fake? Because I can assure you that little flap of paper is 100% genuine. You want to know how I got it? Well, my father was a stylist and a fiendish one at that. Absolutely obsessed with the art of removing one's hair. So much so that he was always using the family as living test subjects for his work, sometimes even when we weren't willing. One night he was off crazier than usual. Mommy dons her favorite hat to protect her hair, which, mind you, had already been mutilated thrice in the past week. Uh, he doesn't like that. Not one bit. So, me watching, he takes the clippers to her scalp, laughing while he does it. The result was the most off-the-wall haircut I'd ever seen. Impressive to look back on, but terrifying in the moment. At that age, I was much too preoccupied with fitting in, being cool, having a normal head like everyone else. But he turns to me and he says, Why so stylish? Comes at me with the clippers. Why so stylish? Sticks the blades in my hair. Let's put some art on that scalp. And... Why so stylish? Anyway, he ended up making my head look like the kind of thing you'd see in some sort of modern art exhibit. And you know what? I loved it. In that moment, everything just clicked for me. In the span of a few minutes, I went from a trendy little poser to someone who could truly appreciate the value of a unique haircut. The rest was history. I dropped out of school, took every barber class I could, and devoted my life to the craft. You know, along with the whole organized crime thing. Speaking of which, it's pretty funny that I still haven't been found here by... Actually, before I continue, let me just moisten up that hair. It's getting a tad bit dry. All right. 
right, as I was saying, the good old Batman still hasn't realized what I've been up to while not making a mess of Gotham. You'd think that word of mouth would spread fast as some clown-faced freak. You know, the same one so infamously plastered all over the front page lately has been given out stylish trims on the side, but nope. This city is just too jaded. In Gotham, crime just is. It's accepted, like some part of some unseen contract everyone signs when moving here. That's why I like to shake things up a bit. Anyone can go around robbing liquor stores, but that's not what gets you noticed. No siree, not at all. What gets you noticed is chaos. Pure, unadulterated terror. No, not, not the kind of terror you see on Fox News, but the kind of terror no one can even put a reason behind. It's all so much fun. They say variety is the spice of life. And I'd agree wholeheartedly, even when what I'm spicing is actually, well, death. But hey, whatever gets attention. That's all we're really looking for in this life, right? Attention? Hmm? Well, even if that is the case, a guy like me, a uh, guy like me, needs to get out of the spotlight from time to time. Hence, this job. Here, I'm just a clown given haircuts. Not interested in any funny business at all. I mean, if the Dark Knight himself decided to walk in right now, I wouldn't even know what to do with him. You know, here, I just cut hair. That's it. Pretty simple if I do say so myself. Alright, we need just a little more moisture. Almost finished with the scissors, but not quite yet. What else can we talk about? Or are you one of those precious customers who can't stand having to listen to their barber yammer on and on and on about total nonsense? I'm not sure I blame you if you are. You know, people can be draining, for the lack of a better word. I've always kind of felt that way. Might explain why I treat them like disposable objects, but still. It's always been intriguing to me. Why do I feel so indifferently about everyone else? Or better yet, why does everyone else actually care about each other? Since the dawn of time, life's always been about self-preservation. Keyword, self. If the vicious creatures of the sea had the kind of empathy for each other that most humans do, well, they'd probably be extinct by now. We probably wouldn't even exist if every living creature was that gullible. You know what? I have a theory. I think that there are far more sociopaths out there than we like to admit. I mean, how many people do you think only treat others kindly because they see it as a path to personal gain? You know, in our modern day civilization, what exactly is the difference between caring about someone and pretending to care about someone. Hmm? I, I mean, I don't think there's an, an appreciable difference, at least not from the perspective of whoever's on the receiving end. I mean, how can, how can you be so sure that your friends actually care about you? Hmm? I don't think finding the answer to that question is entirely possible. Well, anyway, I, I realize that's probably a depressing topic for most people, so... I'll go back to the pleasant, albeit clownish, facade I had on earlier. I mean, after all, this this business is partly about self-preservation, too, and you can't keep a business running without happy customers, right? So, let's just forget the Joker's little philosophy lecture. In fact, I'd say we're just about done with these here scissors. Next up, the electric clippers. Here they come. Kind of sound like a little tiny airplane flying around your head. It's rather amusing if you ask me. But really now, time to attend to the finer details.
Well, well, would you look what the back dragged in? Joker. That's me. How can I be of service to you, old pal? You're coming with me. Oh, not until I finish providing my customer with the service they deserve. What do you even want from a poor barber like me? You know what I want. Hmm, let me guess. A haircut? You might have to remove that little cowl of yours for that to happen. Not a haircut. Justice. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to go looking somewhere else. Fat chance. I'm finding it right here. Right now. In that case, I hope and expect that whatever you have planned is just as enjoyable for me as my services have been for my client. Not happening. It's going to be extremely painful. For you. Bane. Speaking and present. About time. I was worried you'd fallen in. Looks like you're a little outnumbered, Mr. Wayne. Numbers aren't important. Doesn't matter if I have to fight two or two hundred of you. This ends now. What ends now? Our fantastic, completely legal service to the fine citizens of Gotham? The clown's right. Perhaps you'd enjoy a little trim yourself. Seems to me you don't fear your lack of style. You welcome it. The only thing I'll be enjoying is the end of your undeserved freedom. All right, all right, all right. I think that's enough of this nonsense. You're really harshing the mellow of my valued client here, Bats. Why don't you two take this outside? Fine. Bane's first. And you're next. Have fun, children. Oh, I'm quite sure we will. Now, where were we? Ah, yes, the Clippers. Just a bit more to do. go. And finally, the requisite blow dry. Nothing fancy here, just a regular old fan that blows hot air at your hair. ultimately decided that would be too easy. Plus, have you seen Mr. Wayne's hair? Only once I taught him the value of style does he have my permission to die. Fair enough. By the way, would you mind checking the schedule for me? I'm curious who's up next. Of 
course. Looks like there's a reservation for Miss Quinn in about 20 minutes. Want me to take it? Quinn, hmm? Sounds familiar. Thanks for the offer, but I think I'll handle it. As you wish. Satisfied? Hmm. Fantastic. Well, I'd like to thank you for giving our little operation a chance. I don't expect everyone to be thrilled with the idea of having their hair cut by criminals, but we're just as capable as the rest, if I do say so myself. Now for what's bound to be your least anticipated part, the payment. In all they say, if you're good at something, never do it for free. And indeed, I think you'll agree that I'm pretty good at what I do. But I've got some good news. You see, I believe we should only offer incredible service here. And what happened with the man in the back costume? Not so incredible. So, to make up for today's lapse in quality service, your trim is on the house. No need to thank me. And now, it's time for the Gotham Barber Shop to bid you farewell. Feel free to come back for a touch-up whenever you please. And, oh yeah, try not to let Gotham's wealthiest vigilante tell you where or where not to get a haircut. I'll see you next time.